glad you could stop by. Welcome to the channel. I'm fixing to head out in the garage here in a minute and work on a steering column on my Bronco. I took it out. I'm going to take it and convert it over to an automatic and uh, put power steering on it. So I'm having to make some modifications just to the column. And uh, we'll be putting new bearings in it and a new turn signal switch. So let's head out to the garage and we'll go restore it together. I'll give you some tips. Come on. Okay, so here's the original column out of the Bronco. Here's the automatic column that I'm going to put in. Now, I'm not going to change it over the automatic yet, but I'm going to pretty soon and we'll do a little video on that. This is an originally a three on the tree, and I shaved off the original shifter on the column here. I put a first floor shifter in it. It's been good. I've been driving it for 60,000 miles that way, but I'm going to convert it to power steering. And while I'm converting it to power steering, I'm putting the column for an automatic in it. So when I do convert it to an automatic, I already have the column ready to go. Now you notice I didn't have any, there's no wires going to that button. The switch on the inside, it messed up so long ago, uh, the horn wire was grounding and creating problems and knowing I was going to redo this, I'd already purchased a new switch and a new steering wheel adapter for that horn and so we'll put those in right now but that's why there's no wires in there. Here's where the two contacts were. Two contacts and they just ate this up and eventually started sparking and don't know why. Don't know why it's it got laid up, but I've got a new horn adapter or steering wheel adapter and a new switch to go back in here. I bent this back, this was straight, I bent it back because when it was in position, in the stock position, it hit the steering wheel because the steering wheel is kind of flat. So I had to get it in position, bend it where I wanted it. That way it could be out of the way. Works good. show you how these little wires come out of here and I have this tool right here that I don't know, purchased it uh, I think I got it from O'Reilly I, I ordered it from them might have got it off the internet anyway it's handy it's for moving a bunch of these style of round ones like this there's different sizes that 
that fit in here to, to unlock these. And then some of them it uses a, it's this flat type. But right, what we'll do is we'll figure out which one of these fits it. I think it's gonna be this one. We're gonna shove it over it and that's gonna collapse the keeper that holds it in place. Now while I'm holding it nice and firm here against the tool, I'm gonna pull this wire out like that. see this little tong, little tong right here that sticks out. What you're doing is you're collapsing that tong when you push this little circular piece over. So we'll take all of them out. Okay, now that we got those clips off, we're going to put a little piece of tape around these to kind of hold them together so we can pull it through the column. I don't think they'll get caught on anything, we'll just pull it through. do is just wire and tape it on there so I'll have some way to pull the new one back through. Now this collar right here is held on by these two 7 16 bolts to these two 7 16 nuts, excuse me. And this is the this is the collar that's going to be used for the automatic. And uh, you'll see here in a second how funky these these two bolts are kind of made special for this, and they fit into a slot on the back side. So you got to get creative when you're putting this back together to hold that stuff in there. I'll show it to you right now. There is a cone-shaped piece that fits up into this upper bearing, and we gotta, gotta make room to get it out. So let's try this real quick. I'm gonna knock this column downward, and you'll see when I pull it back out what that looks like. there and then I, when that thing gets tightened down in there it wedges itself onto the steering shaft here's where this inner bearing is and we're replacing this going in that new piece um, that wedges and as you can see this end has the same thing we're going to reuse this shaft and we're going to shorten it down here and we're going to put this dude right here on it Alright, so the first thing I want to do here is we're going to take a new bearing. I bought these a few months ago. Uh, for sure I bought them off eBay. There's a part number if you can read it. All these Ford columns took the same one. And the upper and lowers are the same. So here's the bottom of the automatic column right here. This bearing is going to go right in there like that. Alright, so I ran into a problem. This automatic column for a 74 
has a smaller bearing in it. So I'm going to drill out this bearing, this bearing housing, and this is out of the 68. I've got a bearing to fit in. I'm going to take it and put it in there. Modification that generally you don't have to do if you have the right stuff, but it's uh, it's pre-Christmas and I won't be able to get proper bearing. So I have the ability, I'm just changing this housing out. That way I can put this bearing in here that won't fit in here. And even looking on the internet, it's not real clear what, what component even fits in here. So we're gonna make it work. These are spot welded in in four spots. spot welded in probably just take those and yeah, maybe I'll grind them down Now since I've got this thing finished up, I can put some paint on it. Here's the old one that came out out of the center column. I'm going to start putting this one together, but I got a big mess here to clean up first, so hang loose. All right, so we're going to put this lower column bearing in and uh, we'll try to get it in there straight. We're going to put this upper column bearing in.
All right, this piece right here, it has two square headed bolts that come in from the back side. These square bolts are gonna fit in here. And if you look real closely, it has a wedge to it, okay? And when you just put them in there loosely and when you tighten them up, it wedges and forces this head to move over to the side as it tightens up. It's that way on both sides. So this has to go into, they lock into those two little holes right there. So I'll give you a real close up on how that goes together, see how well it works. Just get them started. So I'm going to show you how this goes together, but this is not the right order, so I'm just going to show you so you can see, because once this other collar is here, you can't see what's happening in here. Okay, so I hope this view is good enough. This piece is going to come in here, and it's going to go like this, okay? And these things, you push these square heads outward, okay, like that. So you got some clearance. Now it slides into the area and then pull them back through and tighten it down as you're pulling it so it stays launched into that hole. And that's what holds this collar in. This collar is what's gonna hold this shift collar in and the shift collar is what holds that spring-loaded tube down in there. It all has to be together like that. Okay, I put a little touch of grease on this. It slides in here first. And notice your orientation on that hole. Okay. So let's take that orientation, let's put this kind of straight up, the orientation's right out here on the side. So we'll stick it down in there. The spring's gonna go on here, and it's just gonna fall down in there. And then, We'll go ahead and put this collar on here. Like that. We're going to take this thing and we're going to feed it down in there. We know the orientation on that's here, so we've got to get it to fit. Feel for it. Now, we're holding this in place. Get our piece here that we have prepared. Side note, one quick side note I forgot to do, and I thought about this last night as I was thinking about putting this stuff back together. This boot and this collar, they, um, they go from the inside, actually it goes like this, they go from the inside and they need to be on here first. They need to slip on here first, then all this goes together. So I need to re disassemble the whole thing here, put this back on, and then put it back together. Let me 
mean to tell you, it's just enough room for those wires to go through, and that's it. Look at the crappy quality of this of this grant. And I mean there's there's only one top we can get, Grant, right? It's one for this Bronco. It's generally pretty good stuff. But look at this. So you can see that the plate the plate's centered on there. Look at this one. The plate's not even centered on it. It's gonna be oblong as it's spinning around in a circle. Doesn't hurt anything, it's just, I don't think it will. I hope it doesn't, it's just crappy. It's crappy, crappy. As a matter of fact, where this comes inward is where these two solders are. It's really likely that this one contact point right here on the outside is gonna come right across the top of that solder. So you can see how this is here. You got these two contacts. When they make contact together from the horn button, and the horn goes off. Now they make contact right here on these two plates and watch what happens up here just like I thought as this thing spins around it's gonna come over here and it comes completely off. So it looks like the only option I have take that copper swash plate off there and re-glue it back on. Alright I re-centered it Solder the wires back in place. Glue her back on. All right, now it's time to put the connectors back on the end of the harness. So what I'm going to do is I've got I took two pictures earlier uh, before I took it apart. The small connector has got an orange and a green with a red stripe. So I'm going to yank those out of here and then. All you gotta do, orient it right, shove it in, and it clicks into place. Do the same on the other side. Check it, holding and good. We'll just repeat that process with these others. I got that picture right there. clicks and then clicked. Good, good. All right, the next step we're going to put the adapter on here, the, the steering wheel adapter and everything that goes on. The first thing that goes on there, this is a little metal cone shaped wedge that when it tightens up it collar, collars around the shaft. So we'll toss this down on there first. You have your spring. That spring pushes that wedge down into that bearing up here. So we'll put that like that. I'll put this to hold it in place for a second. Lift up on this. Put this adapter. This finish ring, the two one buttons go through here. This grant will takes this. Now to get this adjustment right, I'm going to pull this down and 
until I got the clearance I want. The spring is trying to push it this way, but I want just a little bit of clearance right there. Once I get that set, I'm gonna come down here on the other end and we're gonna put the lock on it and lock this down tight. Put a little paint on that, let it dry, good to go. This piece right here is what holds the horn button on, so it goes on first. Steering wheel on here. Well, hey guys, thanks for stopping by today and we sure enjoyed making this video for you. Hope you learned something about rebuilding a fort column. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll see you next time on Steve's Restorations.